Dear friends, welcome to Bond with RK Chemistry YouTube channel. In previous video, I have explained the, the relation between depression and freezing point and the molecular weight of solute. In this video, I am going to explain the measurement of depression and freezing point by using Beckman's method. For the measurement of depression and freezing point, there are two methods. There are two simple methods. The first one is the Beckman's method. The second one is the rat scamper method. In rat scamper method, the, the solvent which is used is camper. This method is suitable for the determination of molecular weight of solute which is dissolved in the solvent that is camper. In this video, I will explain uh, the measurement of depression and freezing point by using uh, by using Beckman's method. In the Beckman's method, the apparatus uh, consists of uh, inner freezing tube. This one is inner freezing tube. This one is fixed with uh, this one is fitted with uh, Beckman's thermometer and uh, platinum scaler. This inner freezing tube is fixed with the outer tube. In between inner tube and outer tube, uh, there is a gap. The gap will act as a edge object, which can prevent the uh, sudden cooling of the inner tube and we have a larger vessel which contains freezing mixture in this method generally we use a, a mixture of uh, ice and sodium chloride as a freezing mixture this uh, freezing uh, mixture containing vessel is fitted with uh, a stirrer platinum stirrer which can homogenize the temperature of the freezing Mixture. This is the apparatus setup uh, which is used in Beckman's method. Let's take the procedure. In this procedure, we have to introduce 20 gram of the solvent into the freezing tube through side arm of the freezing tube. Next, we have to immerse the Beckman's thermometer into the solvent to measure freezing point of the solvent. Next, we have to dip uh, Platinum stirrer into the solvent uh, which is present in the freezing tube. The stirrer will homogenize the solvent uh, which is in the freezing tube. Next, we have to take the freezing mixture uh, in the cooling bath. In cooling bath, we have to take freezing mixture. The freezing mixture will be homogenized by using this uh, platinum stirrer. In this method, first we have to determine approximate freezing point by placing the freezing tube directly on the cooling bath. After measuring the approximate freezing point, the solid will be converted into liquid. The solid should be melted. After melting of solid, we have to fit the freezing tube with the outer tube. Then we have to place this whole setup on cooling bath. When you put this whole setup on cooling bath, there is a gradual decrease in temperature. Then there is a conversion of this liquid into supercooled liquid. When the temperature of the supercooled liquid is above 0 0.5 degrees centigrade, below the freezing point, then we have to strip the supercooled liquid with the help of uh, this platinum stirrer. When you stir this supercooled liquid uh, uh, with the stirrer, then there is a conversion of supercooled liquid into solid and there is a rise in temperature due to release of uh, latent heat. And there is an increase in temperature, it reaches the maximum and uh, after that, there is a, a maximum constant temperature. That maximum constant temperature indicates the freezing point of the solvent. After recording the actual freezing point of the solvent, we have to remelt the solid into liquid. After remelting of uh, solid into liquid, we have to introduce 0.2 gram of solute into the freezing tube via side arm of the freezing tube. Then there is a formation of uh, 
solution. For the measurement of freezing point of the solution, we have to repeat the above procedure. That is, first we have to find out the approximate freezing point of the solution. Next, we have to form supercooled liquid of uh, solution. Then there is a formation of supercooled uh, liquid when you agitate that uh, supercooled liquid. Then there is a formation of uh, solid and there is an increase in temperature due to uh, release of latent heat and it reaches maximum and uh, the temperature will be constant. We have to record that the maximum constant temperature that maximum constant temperature will indicate the freezing point of the solution. In this method, we have to observe some precautions. The first precaution is uh, the temperature of the super cooling liquid should not exceed 0 0.5 degrees centigrade of the freezing point. Should not exceed 0 0.5 degrees centigrade of the freezing point of the approximate freezing point of the solvent or solution. And uh, the stirring should be uniform at the rate of about one moment per second. Throughout this experiment, uh, the stirring should be uniform. It should be, uh, the stirring rate should be one moment per second. And the temperature of the cooling bath, uh, this is the cooling bath, uh, should not be four to 5 degrees centigrade below the freezing point of the liquid. It should not be 3 degrees centigrade or 2 degrees centigrade below to the freezing point of the liquid. It means uh, that difference of uh, temperature of cooling bath and uh, the freezing point of the liquid should be in between 4 degrees centigrade to 5 degrees centigrade. We know the freezing point of the pure solvent and the freezing point of the solution, the difference in freezing point of the pure solvent and solution will give a depression in freezing point that is the delta Tf. So we can calculate the delta Tf by taking the difference in between, difference of freezing point of pure solvent and freezing point of solution. By this equation we can calculate the molecular weight of solute that is Mb is equal to Kf into Wb by delta Tf into 1000 by Wk. Here Kf is a molar depression constraint of the solvent and Wb is the weight of the solute in grams. Wa is the weight of solvent in grams. Delta Tf, this is a depression in freezing point. So when you put all these uh, in this equation, you will get a molecular weight of the solute. Thank you. Thank you very much.